I want to shift the conversation to basketball for a bit, and I'll start with The Last Dance. I love The Last Dance. <laughs> and you and Larry Bird, mostly you, I hope Larry's not listening, but mostly you, <laughs> dominated the 1980s, right? You dominated it. But talk about when you realized that that moment had come when the Magic Bird Pistons era of the NBA had become the Jordan era. Well, you know, it was easy to see when it <laughs> when it hit. I mean, when we played them in 91 for the NBA finals and he and, and he came up on the right side coming down Bacard, and he took off with the tongue out. <laughs> and we all jumped. We thought we had him and in midair he, he switched it. it. Switched to the it. left hand. <laughs> oh, man. We said, you know what? Pass another torch. <laughs> and they beat us 4-1 in that series. And when I uh, went in after the game, after they had beat us, I told him, it's your turn. It's your time now. And sure enough, won three straight, took off for baseball, came back. Now, who 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 else in the world could take a couple years off, come back, and win three more championships. I mean, Nobody. Nah, but I don't. Jordan. Yeah, but I don't want you to give him credit for for baseball. I mean, he he <laughs> he sucked pretty. Good. He was terrible at baseball. <laughs> oh yeah, so that, and he knows that too. <laughs> so that must have been. We'll just call that. We'll just call that a, a, a well deserved recess in the middle because we ain't gonna say he played baseball. All my friends from Detroit got one question for you though. Why wasn't Isaiah Thomas on the dream team? What's the real answer? Everybody think they know. Well, he was supposed to be on the team, and Isaiah just Thomas was, is one of the one of the. I mean, it's you and then Isaiah is. Oh, as, no question, no question about it. I mean, talent wise, is without a doubt he should have been on the team, but he just had problems with so many guys on that team, or they had problems with him, and so they let it be known that they didn't want to play if he was going to be on the team. And that's what really kept him off the team, right? Did they have a problem with him or did they have a problem with the Pistons and the way the Pistons thoroughly abuse people? There you go. There you go. <laughs> you, you just said it. The Pistons. And I think that that cost him. And, um, and you know, Isaiah and I was boys. So we, we, we were close, close friends. And um, I thought he was going to be on it. We were going to have some good times together. And it just didn't happen. And uh, Commissioner Stern decide to go another direction. And so, and then think about this. Your coach is coaching the team. I Chuck know. Daly is coaching the team and you're not there. And because he's a much better player than John Stockton, no question about it. Uh, there's not even, I, there's not a doubt yeah. in anybody's mind. Yeah. I mean, I, that John Stockton over Isaiah Thomas, the only thing that's comparable <laughs> is Steve Nash winning those MVPs over Shaq. Like none yeah. of that should have, <laughs> none of that should have happened. <laughs> Let me ask you this. You got, you walk into a gym, you got Isaiah Thomas, Steph Curry, Allen Iverson, and Kyrie Irving as your point guard. Who you taking? I'm taking Isaiah. That's, that's easy because that's who I know. That's listen, you go with what you know, what's been yeah, proven, what's, what's, what, listen, he scored 25 points against the Lakers in the NBA Finals in one quarter Quarter. on a bad leg. You you see, I'm I'm going with that. (laughs) (laughs) I can't can't argue with you on that. You know, I like Kyrie. I like Steph. I love him. I I watch him all the time. But, you know, I got to go with what I know. Yeah, and growing up in that, I, I'm taking AI. I love Isaiah. I think Isaiah mm-hmm. is one of the most misunderstood people. Isaiah and Charles Barkley, to me, have hearts of gold. They are yeah. great, great human beings. Uh, I wish more people got a chance to know them. But I'm taking Allen Iverson. Because Allen okay. Iverson, you you go to the second round of the playoffs with Allen Iverson, period. Just on your back. I mean, he he's just, he was an animal. Well, but we, go ahead. Well, he did it by himself. He, <laughs> remember, they, they were not a talented team. When they played the Lakers in the finals. And he won the first game by himself. Yeah, by himself. <laughs> <laughs> so we we talked about the last dance, but you've got your own Netflix documentary coming. Talk to us about that project and when can we expect to see it? What is it? Yeah, uh, I got my own documentary coming out. We're filming it now. And, and just like, you know, I was in Michael's, he'll be in mine, President Obama. We got a lot of great people who are going to be uh, on my documentary as well. And so... We're still filming it now. You know, a lot of the Lakers, Isaiah being it as well, Larry Bird. So 
it's going to be great and people, but it'd be completely different from the last dance. And so uh, I'm happy because we needed the last dance because we needed some live programming Something. and some content that we could all wait for every Sunday. So thank you, Michael, for that. <laughs> but um, I, it'll cover my whole life from Lansing, Michigan, growing up in a family of 10 all the way to becoming a businessman and my belief in the Lord. And so it's going to cover all those things. You know, the documentary is only the tip of the iceberg because HBO is also doing a docu-series of the Showtime mm -hmm. Lakers. The project is slated for a 2022 release, but so many of our listeners weren't old enough to actually witness the Showtime Lakers. Right. What made that particular brand of basketball so unique at the time? And how were the Lakers a precursor for... I don't know, the the Golden State Warriors that we see out there, mm -hmm. not now, but, you know, when they're all healthy. Because it was fast break excitement, right? Me coming down the middle, and I had James Worthy, beautiful bat Man, James Worthy, man, unbelievable player on that wing, and he could do so many things. You have Michael Cooper on the other side, Byron Scott. So our we were athletes, running. Those, you had yeah, athletes. That's what you yes. had. You had a yes. athlete. Yes, running and gunning. So I'm I'm be throwing it behind my back, behind my head, between my legs, and they finish with dunks. So it was the, the excitement of Showtime. And then we also had Hollywood. So every celebrity wanted to be there and was there. And so you get to capture that as well. Then we had a club in the forum called the Forum Club that was world renowned that everybody and their mother tried to get in at halftime. And after the game, it was like a nightclub. So all these things. And then we had an owner who was a playboy himself dating uh, playboy bunnies. So it, it was, it was all that mixed in one. That's what made showtime, my brother. So uh, you'll get to see that. I know that, Showtime got one coming out. HBO got one coming out. So it's going to be amazing to see Showtime relive on both of those networks.